How are you doing? Well, thanks for clicking on to today's edition of the Long Range Discussion for the 13th of February, the Monday edition. And we have seen the coldest conditions of the season so far, if you could believe it, in Moscow, Russia. Uh, I was very concerned some seven days ago, this day last week, about a, a vortex of intense upper level low pressure that uh, with packed with severe cold weather would Im impact and cross or get certainly very close to Russia and Moscow uh, and, and produce very severe cold. We did see that yesterday. The high, minus 8 Fahrenheit, which is around just below minus 22 in Celsius. And this morning, under those, well, in fact, I was going to say under those clear skies, we actually seen some snow fallen while the temperature was sitting at minus 31 Celsius. So, uh, of course, if you believe in the, the whole myth about it being too cold to snow, that certainly proves that wrong if you certainly were in Moscow this morning where the, the snow was falling. Temperatures very severe. The coldest levels since January of 2006. And of course, that was one of the coldest winters in Moscow in some 40-odd years, I believe. But if you look at the blog today, you can see here the headline, Moscow plunges to minus 31, coldest since 2006. And as well as that, the uh, Mo, uh, Bur uh, sorry, uh, Brussels ends its longest streak of sub-zero temperatures by day and night since 1941. So, of course, while I got the UK wrong in terms of the winter, uh, and I'm, I am disappointed about that. We never seen that widespread snow and severe cold that, that I anticipated. However, I did see some 10 days in advance of the European cold spell that will, by the way, go down in history books. I wouldn't be surprised if the period between January 25th right up to now is the coldest period in the continent uh, in some 30 to perhaps 50 years. It wouldn't surprise me. It will be right up there with the big giant cold spells of history for the continent of Europe. But certainly we've seen during the past two weeks, some beautiful, beautiful winter scenes. This is just outside The Hague, the Dutch capital. Look at those clear skies, the Arctic high pressure, and uh, trees encased in hoar frost. And of course, only severe cold can produce beautiful scenes like that. And we've seen that, of course, we've seen uh, temperatures in, in Milan drop to minus 12 Celsius. Very unusual. In Venice, we've seen the famous canals freeze over, and of course, across the Alpine region as well. This is a scene from uh, one of the valleys in Switzerland as well. Just stunning scenes, but of course, uh, many parts of, particularly uh, from Poland eastwards uh, through the Ukraine, the Ukraine was the hardest hit, was seen some 400 people lose their lives due to the cold. Of course, many of them, uh, with, uh, the combination of drink and homelessness, was a big contributor to the deaths that we've seen. But certainly, if you if we let's look back at the, the, the pattern overall, folks, you know, yeah, I forecasted a, a cold and a very snowy period for, for the UK. That did not obviously materialise. I believe the Azores high, perhaps influenced by the, 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 the previous summer. Back last summer, we've seen a severe drought up through France and of course into uh, the UK, many parts of the south and southeastern part of the UK have seen a, a very nasty drought situation. Did that uh, influence a stronger than normal Azores high pressure ridge? That is possible. That is maybe uh, an influence that uh, caused the high pressure to, to stay over the UK and suppress that cold air from moving from the east westwards across the, the, the UK. We certainly did see over the past 10 days some very cold weather into the UK. So yes, have managed to get the cold uh, as far in as England, but you know that ridge of high pressure has been just too strong over Ireland, Northern Ireland, as well as Scotland. And of course, we've seen very mild Atlantic air, uh, you know, continue to control our airspace while the rest of the continent. So really, we got the severe cold, you know, the coldest period since 1941. That's going back a long time. And of course, that also goes back right through the, the harsh winters of the 50s, the 60s, the 70s. 
70s and even some of those uh, historic coal spills back in the 1980s as well. There was a, a very nasty period uh, uh, around 96, ni between 95 and 97 was seen some severe cold. Of course, temperatures in Glasgow dropped down to minus 20 back in December of 1995. So when you look at that, folks, uh, the low countries have seen a remarkable period of cold weather. So we got it within a couple of hundred miles of the British Isles. But yet, no excuse. I did get the UK inaccurate in terms of that cold and snow. Now, are we going to see any period of cold for the rest of this winter, folks? This is the upper level pattern of the ECMWF. There is the reason that uh, Moscow dropped down to minus 31 this morning. That intense upper low of severe cold basically got so close to the, 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 the Mo Muscovites and of course it really made them shiver uh, this morning. But certainly this here, this area of high pressure, the Azores High, has been so dominant keeping winter to the east of uh, of generally the north and the western part of the, the UK and Ireland as well. But I am not looking, uh, you know, I'm not really too enamoured with the model uh, in terms of the next 10 days. It certainly does not look particularly cold. Europe, in fact, shows signs of moderating and becoming a lot milder than we've seen over the past two weeks. Is the cold spell easing? Yeah, I think it really is, folks. We are going to start to see a relaxation of this trough, this severe cold period. Notice how the cold, yes, it's still chilly through the southern part of England, up and through the low countries. Scandinavia remains very cold. But the problem is, folks, as we skip through the sequence here on Tuesday, look at how mild Europe is. That is not a good sign. Look at how there's no cold anywhere over the UK through the low countries, even across southern parts of Scandinavia, we've got much milder conditions. Does this mean that we're not going to see any more cold and snow? No, it doesn't. And I do believe that we are going to see a period uh, of perhaps a short-lived bursts of cold, perhaps some snow, but that much-anticipated cold period that I forecasted for the UK, I, I think our window of opportunity, so to speak, is gone for another year, unfortunately. Yes, I will commit to that statement that I don't think we're going to see that period of cold and snow that, that I, I so uh, forecasted since summer of last year. And yet, I'm very disappointed to say that, folks, but I'm not going to uh, you know, keep beating this drum uh, until springtime. Many of you think I'm going to continue forecasting cold and snow right up and through springtime. No, that's not going to be the case. But look, let's look at the pattern overall. We've got the cold and the severity of that cold very close to the UK. It just was stopped by that Azores high pressure system and we really didn't see much of a winter here across Scotland and down through Ireland as well. England, yeah, you had a good period of 10 days or so of cold and snow and, you know, uh, you know, winter did arrive in the UK, albeit for a short window. Uh, but, you know, the disappointment is that we didn't see it. We certainly seen it across Europe uh, and I'm not going to but too disheartened because I did manage to see that severe cold cover the continent. But certainly, uh, you know, the models are, are showing some cold and snow again back at the very end of this month. You know, let's wait and see what happens, folks. Let's not jump too quickly onto that. I want to see a trend in the models first before we start to commit. March could uh, bring some severe, severe cold and snow, but those solar rays are starting to get more intense as the sun rises. Days become longer, nights shorter. You know, there's always next winter, of course. I hope you have a great evening wherever you are and continue to stay, keep checking back to the blog. Uh, subscribe to Facebook and Twitter if you haven't already and uh, find out my latest ideas. Hope you have a good evening, folks. Bye-bye.